Okay, quiet on set, please. Going for a take. Can I get sound? Rolling. Camera. Rolling. And mark it, please. Scene 21, take two. And wait for settle. And action. So we're on set, second day, um, on location, and uh, yeah, it's uh, complete chaos, but it's going really, really well. We're getting some really awesome shots. Wait, it's not chaos. <laughs> it's not complete chaos, sorry. I mean, to me, it's chaos. Just say we're all great. Okay. And they are all great. They are all amazing. <laughs> okay, I cut that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, on at speed this time. Okay. Actors ready? Yep. Action rehearsal. Coming, stepping in. Yeah, interesting. Cool, yeah, I think that feels, that feels good. I like that and I'm just struggling to see it yeah. in a way that it, it works okay. with an interesting frame. Mm -hmm. See that? Yeah, so I'm just doing DIT, uh, saving data from the camera and the sound boys and uh, after that we can maybe edit the whole uh, scene if you're lucky. Yeah, can on. At all. Um, cool, uh, my name is Geraint Hill, I am currently first AD on uh, the Ipanema file, which is this film that we're doing at the moment. Um, my role is essentially the day-to-day -day running of the set um, and locations, making sure that everyone is in the right place at the right time. Um, not the wheels in the machine, but maybe the oil in the machine, I suppose. That's it. Rubbish, rubbish analogy. Um, yeah, it's been going really well. We are, uh, yeah, we're looking at a couple of locations knocked over so far. Some of the acting performances have been absolutely fantastic. It's been a pleasure to work with Jim Edgar um, on camera and Danny on uh, direction. It has been a hell of a roller coaster experience and we are looking to steamroll forward. Um, do you want to take a break for a bit? Uh, do you know what? Yeah, basically, so, in fact, the, directly on the line, uh, there is the bottom of the wall, the bottom of the... Uh, okay, so hi, I'm Jim. Um, I'm the DP on this film. Uh, today we're shooting in a restaurant, a restaurant scene uh, that's going to sell as Ipanema in Brazil. Um, we are now on our third day and we're going pretty well. Uh, we've uh, you know, start of filming often goes quite slowly so we're still kind of getting into the rhythm um, but what we've got um, we're happy with I'm reasonably happy with most things cameramen are never entirely happy but uh, uh, the director's happy so that's the most important thing uh, shooting on Sony FS100 uh, my own camera my own lights my own lenses my own gear uh, what else have I got? Uh, mainly on um, Zeiss 
primes, uh, old 1980s stills lenses made for the contacts cameras, um, which are very, very beautiful, uh, sharp lenses. Um, and they help to soften the digital image. Um, and that is a lot of what I do when I'm not shooting sort of corporate stuff um, is we'll trying to lessen the digital look okay. of an image. I mean, they, so the Merlin, uh, I've got the the coatings this. helps. Um, um, I've also got on the camera, and, uh, 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 front of the camera, in a matte very box, like uh, a um, native uh, uh, Tiffin Half and Black Promis filter, yeah, glass yeah, filter, okay. which basically is um, clear optical glass with a little tiny microscopic flecks of black in it, which the technical side of that is that it diffracts the light slightly um, into the shadow areas. The effect of that is it lifts the shadow area, so if you then expose for the highlights and make sure you don't clip highlights, you're not clipping the blacks, you're not, you're not losing all the detail in the blacks because the, the filter kind of raises the, the, the light level in the shadows. Um, also using an ND6 filter just to, um, so that I can open up the lens a bit more, get a bit of a shallower depth of field. Uh, the FS100 is a 635mm sensor. I've got someone playing down with my legs there, Sorry. so I'm a bit distracted. Uh, <laughs> he's always doing that. Uh, he just can't we help touching it. my legs. Um, uh, I've lost my train of thought now. Yeah, FS100 is a super 35mm size sensor, which is roughly equivalent to APS-C, something like the 7D, Canon, Canon 7D. And that is um, standard film, uh, movie film camera um, gate size. So rather than the, uh, the 5D, which is a full stills frame, full 35mm stills frame sensor, the uh, the APS-C or the Super 35 um, is exactly the same size as, as a film ca camera. Pretty, not exactly the same size, but, but basically it's, it's the same. So your depth of field will be the same. You put a 35mm lens on the FS100, it's going to have the same depth of field as it would on uh, an, old, um, an old ARRI film camera, although you, you probably wouldn't put a stills lens on an early film camera. But I digress. Uh, what else? I'm recording to a, an external recorder, a Convergent Design Nano Flash. That records the uncompressed HDMI output from the camera so to a much higher bit rate and it's not the internal camera codec which compresses everything. Um, Image-wise, if you take both out of the camera and out of the external recorder, you won't see any difference, but once you get to the grade, if you start heavily pushing the color, the contrast, you're really gonna um, notice it because you'll start, there's, there's not the information there on the in-camera codec. Uh, it's so heavily compressed that once you start to push it quite heavily in the grade, then you lose a lot of detail. You get a lot of blocking, get a lot of noise in the shadows. Uh, on the Recording to the nano flash, you've got so much more information to work with, so you can push it quite a lot. You can bring the light all the way down, bring details back from the sky. Uh, you can bring the shadows up, so if it looks dark on set, as long as you are not clipping the blacks or clipping the highlights, then that information is all there to be used, and you can manipulate that in post-production. Uh, and that's about all I can think of to say at this moment. Can you have some lunch? Yeah.